21 things that you need to make sure you understand and know about before you make the leap to full-time small business owner. All right, you've decided to make the leap to become a full-time small business owner. You are going to be full of fear and excitement. There's nothing more rewarding than building your own business, but it comes with a cost because there's going to be times when you are going to be scared to death to make that change. But at the same time, you're going to have this excitement building within you as far as what can be and what those possibilities are. The first thing is, this is probably the ugliest thing and the scariest thing of all, and that is you have no steady paycheck. Right now, you're probably already used to having a check that's deposited into your account every Friday or at least every other Friday or whatever day, the 1st and the 15th, however you get paid today. Well, guess what? The very first time that same day rolls around and there's no money deposited, you will go into full panic mode. That's going to happen. It is tough because now it's up to you to bring that money home. No more just showing up and getting paid. You have to hustle and make things happen. To this day, when I think back of what I miss the most about being a part of corporate America are those steady paychecks because there's some days that it's like you're constantly going, where's the next dollar coming from? What's happening? As you build your business, you get better and better and that a lot of that goes away, but you're always going to have to be out there hustling because you will not have that steady paycheck. So I'm telling you right now, this is probably the scariest thing of all of which you're going to have to deal with. Tied to that, you're going to have to learn how to budget because the best way for you to do that leap is to A, set up an emergency fund that you have in place so that way you have the money to be able to live off of. But with that, you need this budget. You need to have two budgets. One budget will be for you personally and your personal goals and needs of what you have to be able to survive. You need to cut that down to as minimum as you can as you get this business up and going. But your business also will require a budget. You need to know where every dime is going as you build this business. You can't just live willy-nilly all over the place. You need to make sure you have a budget on both sides so that way you control that money piece and make sure you don't go into that full panic mode. But if you have that emergency fund, it definitely is gonna help you, but you don't wanna waste it either. So make sure that you have a budget. The next thing that's really going to surprise you are your taxes because they now become your responsibility. And trust me, the first time you have to write a check for $5,000, $10,000, $15,000, you're going to swallow hard. Because right now, let's face it, you're spoiled. Your employer takes out those taxes. All you have to do is do that painful thing at tax time where you file your uh, income taxes. But there's a lot of taxes that you're not going to be used to. It feels very differently when all of a sudden you're writing that check for that 25%, 30%, 40%, whatever it is that you need to do. The other thing that you're going to have to uh, make up for is your social security taxes. Right now, your employer pays half of those. You pay the other half. So right now you're doing about seven and a half percent to your social security. Guess what? You've got to take pay that whole 15 percent going forward. So you've got that 15 percent on top of your regular taxes. Taxes will be tough. You're going to have to make sure you file those quarterly taxes. Uh, For those of you that uh, feel the need, you definitely want to get a CPA or someone to help you out with that. But uh, this one is going to sting a little bit, especially when you start watching what those numbers are. The next thing you want to do is you want to have a rainy day fund. Earlier, I talked about the fact that you need to make sure that you have the money set aside for uh, to make that leap. But the second part is you need to continue to maintain that. So as you go, you don't want to deplete it. You want to keep that rainy day fund because things happen within our business. Uh, If something was to happen globally or where, you know, something happens with the financial markets out there or there's another major issue or the, the weather goes crazy and uncharacteristically or there's flooding or there's a massive earthquake, whatever the case may be, you need to have a rainy day fund because if your business dries up, you're going to need money to be able to keep the business open and to keep your personal life going. So make sure you always keep that three to six months of expenses going, uh, not only to make the leap, but also to continue on going forward. All right. This one also is going to be a painful one and that's going to be your insurance plan, you need to make sure that you have one in place. Right now, you are probably on your company's insurance. Obviously, the best thing for you would be as if you had a significant other who you could be on their insurance so that you can go ahead and keep that. But I'm telling you right now, in today's crazy world, insurance is expensive. And you're going to want to make sure that you have in place before you make that leap. What insurance plan are you going to go on so that it's there? Because remember, you no longer will have that workers comp to be able to cover you if something was to happen. So also things are going to happen. You're going to get hurt. You might have an emergency visit or two. So you need to make sure you don't want to create a massive problem for yourself. So uh, without that insurance plan, you got to do your homework so you know exactly how you're going to be covered. 
You will also make less money per hour than what you do now. Uh, it sounds good. You might say, hey, I'm going to charge $300 for my services. And that sounds good. But you got to remember, you're working a lot more hours on your business. And there's going to be a lot of hours that are spent where you're not making money. So you're not really truly making $300 an hour. You have to take that entire amount that you make and divide it by all the hours that you work. Typically, most local small business owners are working 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week, mostly in that first year or two. A lot of folks are working 60, 70 hours to make that work, and they're not installing. They're not uh, selling products or services during all that time. There's a lot of time you have to spend working on your business. There's drive time and everything else. So that your, your dollar average actually does go down, especially in the beginning as you're trying to figure it out. But the better you get at your processes and whatnot, that dollar average will come up, especially when you start learning about your numbers and how to make more money. But uh, in the very beginning, more than likely, you're going to make less money per hour than what you do because you probably work 30, 40 hours at your day gig uh, and it's guaranteed, you know, per hour type of thing. But when you're on your own business, you're working a lot harder because you're trying to get it off the ground. So you just need to be prepared for that. It's going to sting a little. Uh, next thing, one of the best things about being a local small business owner is you get to be your own boss. Uh, you know, you don't have that boss breathing down your neck. You don't have to worry about what that company wants to do. You can set their own pace. You can build the company of your dreams. You can make it whatever it is that you want to do. This one here is very exciting. Now, it does have a downside to it, which we're going to cover in a few of the items coming up here. But uh, I will not lie. Being your own boss is a wonderful feeling because you control your destiny. You control how much money you make. You control who you get to work with, what types of people you get to work with and all that good stuff, which we'll talk about here shortly. But uh, it, it's a wonderful thing to be your own boss. I'm going to tell you, your new boss, by the way, can also be a real jerk, can be a slave driver, is someone who's going to kick you in the ass. Because here's what's going to happen. There's going to be mornings when you wake up and all you're going to want to do is hit the snooze button. And that boss inside of you is going to click and say, get your butt up. You need to go to work. You need to get things done. Your new boss is going to make you work those crazy hours we talked about earlier. Uh, and it's going to have you do some things that are going to be uncomfortable. They're going to put you in front of people if you're not used to that. Th this new boss inside of you needs to really kick in. You are the CEO of your company now and you can't be easy on your employee, your one employee, which is you. You're going to have to be tough on that person as you build it. So just be prepared that it's great that you get to be your own boss, but your new boss is also going to be a jerk. By the way, bye-bye to those employee perks. I should have covered this one earlier, but here's the thing with the employee perks. Right now, you get sick time, you get vacation time, you get all kinds of cool stuff that go along, 401k and everything else. Well, guess what? All of those are are gone when you're done. So, you know, more than likely, you're not going to be having breaks in the beginning. You might not even be having vacation time. You'll be lucky if you get a day off. Uh, and you know what? There's going to be mornings that you wake up and you are sick as a dog, but yet you've already got commitments that you have to do. And you're going to have to go to work sick where in the past you got to not go to work. Um, you know, you were saving for your, your, if you had a company 401k, you were probably having money come out for that, or they were matching it or putting it in there for you. Guess what? That's gone as well. So make sure when you're looking at that jump and that leap that you look at what is going away and how you're going to be able to live and survive with what you have. Next one, you have no one to blame but yourself. Right now, a lot of times in, in our companies and our businesses, when we get paid by somebody else, we have people to blame. We can blame our boss. We can blame the other employees. We can blame the company. We can blame the bureaucracy. We can blame anyone but ourselves. Well, guess what? When you are your own business owner and it, it, the buck stops with you, there's no one to blame but yourself. Yeah, you can sit there and you can try to blame the weather and everything else. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's all on you. You didn't make the plans to get through those tough times. You're the one that didn't make sure that you had the right products or services. You're the one that did. So everything stops with you. You have no one to blame for yourself. So be prepared that you're going to beat yourself up quite a bit. Remember that jerk of a boss? That's right. Now, there are no corporate company to bail you out. I kind of just talked about that, but it's important for you to understand that because right now, if you're part of a, a business that has a corporate group, you know, you might not see what's going on behind the scenes. And if that store is not profitable or whatnot, a lot of times the, the corporation can come in and help bail them out or help get them through, uh, especially if they're short on payroll or something else. Well, guess what? If, if you're that person and you're running it, there's no one to come bail you out. Every mistake that you have, you're the one that's going to have to solve it. You know, right now, if you have a problem, you can go get your boss. But guess what? When you are that boss and you, you're into a pickle and you don't know how to solve it, there is no one to bail you out. You're going to have to figure it yourself. Now you can reach out to your mentors or other business owners or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, the work's all going to come on you. The only person who can resolve it is you.
By the way, you are going to have some customers yelling at you. No matter how great you are at customer service, there's always going to be times when people are upset. And the important thing is you're going to have to learn how to let people yell at you. And if you're someone who struggles with people being in your face or being mad or upset, you're going to have to get over it because you can't get into altercations with your customers. You're going to have to listen, hear them out and help resolve the issue because the number one thing you're going to have going for you in your small business is your word of mouth, is your referral business. So you need to make sure that you understand that you can learn how to handle customers yelling at you. The biggest thing I can tell you is make sure you understand they're not mad at you per se. They're mad at the situation and they just want the situation resolved. But uh, if you don't like confrontation and you don't like people yelling at you, you better get prepared, buckle up because you're going to have some people yelling at you. Hopefully if you do it right, you're going to have very few, but it will happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Now, being a local small business owner can also be very lonely uh, because right now, if you have a job, you have other people that you interact with. And even as a introvert, I'm a an introvert as well. But you know what? I can only be alone for so long. I kind of need other people. And plus you need those other people to be able to bounce ideas off of and whatnot. I can tell you that some days when you feel very lonely, when you're running into problems, you're not really alone. You need to reach out and find other business owners that you can talk to, other people that you can talk to. If you feel yourself really craving needing others, you need to go out and you need to seek that because it's going to feel very lonely. But I, I promise you, if you start to feel that way, there are other folks that are walking in your shoes. One of the reasons that I love my podcast is I'm able to pull together a group of you guys and just really let you guys know that you're not alone. Other people suffer from the same thing that you do. All right, with that, you're going to have to wear many hats. Right now, you're, you're, you know, right now we get really excited. We think about do, the doing of the business of what it is that we're going to do, but you're going to wear a lot more hats. You're going to be the uh, head of marketing. You're going to be head of operations, of merchandising, of purchasing. You're going to be the scheduler. You're going to be doing your bookkeeping. You're gonna, if you have employees or hire some people, you're going to have to do the HR stuff. You're going to wear a lot of hats and some of those hats are going to fit better than others. Some are going to make you feel really uncomfortable. Some you're not going to want to do at all. There's a running joke out there that most local small business owners hate doing bookkeeping, but it's something that it's a necessary evil. You have to, you want to get paid, you have to pay your bills, uh, in which case sometimes people reach out to other family members or hire somebody, but you need to get ready. You're going to wear many different hats. Uh, that's part of the gig. And if you don't want to do that and all you want to do is, you know, clean carpets or do whatever it is that you want to build your business around, you might want to continue to be an employee because you're going to have to take care of all those other things that there's no one else to take care of, which I want to pull this one out a little bit. There is no human resource department to handle employee problems. Now, employee problems could be from hiring them to training them to them, the drama they create. And if you think you're not going to have any employees, that's fine. But if you think at any point in time that you will, or that you're going to hire people off the streets just to be extra set of hands, you need to understand what the independent contractor roles are because you're not necessarily their boss, even though you're hiring them for the day. Uh, but at the same time, those people also come with drama. They don't show up. They, uh, they're they hard to find and everything else. So the, this human resource piece is actually a bigger piece for more of you than what you think. Uh, but uh, you're going to have to learn how to handle all of those issues. And I know what some of you are thinking right now. You're thinking, hey, I don't have a boss. I'm not going to have any stress. My boss puts so much stress on me. Uh, wrong. You are going to continue to have stress. Because remember earlier when I said you were working for a jerk, uh, that's going to be you. You're going to put a lot of stress on yourself uh, along with that. You're going to have stress of where the next sale is going to come from. You're going to have stress on how to pay the bills. You're going to have stress on how to handle that upset customer. You're going to have stress on how to find products or services that you need to provide that, that, that you can't find the resources for. There's still going to be a lot of stress. Running a, a business is definitely very stressful. There's things you can put in place. There's processes you can put in place to help reduce that stress. But if you think that it's going to completely go away, you're crazy. That is not going to happen. Uh, a lot of folks say, oh, I can't wait to be a local small business owner because I'm going to be able to set my own schedule. I can do my own thing. Well, the reality is you don't really set your own schedule. You can put some parameters to that schedule, but your customers are also going to help set that schedule. Because like I said, if you tell people you're open 10 to 7, well, guess what? Even if you're sick, you still have to be open 10 to 7. You've done that. So you can't really just change your schedule. Uh, the other thing that you're going to find is that in some cases, depending upon what type of business you do, people are going to ask for you late at night on the weekends. Uh, your business model may not be perfect for that same 8 to 5, 10 to 7 type of thing. You may find that you're working seven days a week. You're working really late nights. You're working early. 
Uh, you know, you might say, oh, I want to take Friday off to go to Disneyland with my kids. But at the same time, then your clients are calling you and they're expecting you to have time. So every business is a little bit different. But for most of you, I think you're going to find that if you think that you can just work whenever you want to work, you're going to be surprised because especially in the beginning when you're hustling and trying to make things work, you don't really get to set that schedule. Uh, and there's also going to be some roadblocks to that schedule we'll talk about here shortly. And that's this one. Your family will think they have any time access to you. I watch so many local small business owners get derailed by their own family because when you become your own boss, your family is expecting you to be able to be here at this this kids thing or to go over here to go, hey, let's take the weekend off and let's go over here or whatever the case may be. Or, hey, let's go to lunch. And they're not going to understand that you are going to work and they're going to want to have full access to you. I've watched a lot of people's businesses get derailed because they start doing all the things that their family wants to do. And instead of working, you've got to go to work. Now, I'm not saying don't enjoy your family time because yeah, you can play around with your schedule between this one and the last one. You can play around your schedule to fit your family needs better. But at the same time is you've got to be very careful. It's a fine line that you need to walk and you might find that you run into more problems than you don't. You know, you really don't control everything. There still is bureaucracy. I know a lot of folks hate the bureaucracy that comes with their work currently because they have to run things up the ladder. But guess what? You're going to have a different type of bureaucracy that you're still going to have to deal with. So, for example, you're going to rely on other vendors or other people for some of your products or services or to help you out. And guess what? It's not going to go as smoothly as you think. Just because you're your own boss, if you're dependent upon other people in any way, shape or form, you're still going to run into roadblocks. Uh, if you decide you're going to do something that's going to be government related or work with your city or county or whatever the case may be, guess what? You're going to have to deal with their bureaucracy. So you don't really fully get away from the bureaucracy because you're going to have some that are still with other vendors, other companies, uh, or even within your own company. Uh, so if, if that's one of the reasons you're becoming a local small business owner, I just want to let you know that that does not go away. And if you're somebody that really feels the need to have pats on the back, well, there's going to be no one there to do that for you. A lot of times everybody's motivated by something different. Some people like the attaboys and, you know, hey, you're doing a great job and everything else. You're going to have to be the one that gives it to you. You're going to have to take moments to to really appreciate your successes, your wins. And when you do a great job with a customer or a client, because there really isn't going to be someone else to do it. Now, don't get me wrong you've got to realize that some of your attaboys are coming from your customers and clients. When they're referring you out to other people, that's a form and version of attaboy. They're patting you on the back. They're telling you great job because they're willing to give you to their family, friends, and neighbors. And that's a wonderful thing. Sometimes you'll hop onto Facebook and people will say really nice things about you and your business. So it's not so much that a person's going to pat you on the back as much as you need to look for it and see it as it's coming from other people and other ways and other locations of what you're normally used to seeing. You need to be self-motivated. One of the things you're going to find is you're going to definitely be motivated by the fact that you need to get up and go to work because you got to make some money. Uh, so that part's definitely there, but it nearly needs to be self-motivated. I can't tell you how many local small business owners I run into that have zero motivation and then they wonder why their business is not growing, why it's not doing better. And yet when you, you give them advice on things that they should do, they're not motivated at all to improve their business, to go out there and, and meet new cl customers or clients. They're not motivated to go try new marketing things, whatever the case may be. You really have have to be self-motivated. Uh, if you're not a self-motivated person by nature, you really need to second guess and think through if this is the right thing for you. Because if you like just checking boxes and going to work and doing whatever's told you, that's not going to happen when you own your business because the person that's setting your agenda for the day is you. The person who's setting what you need to accomplish is you. So if you're not a self-motivated person, you really, really, really need to think hard if being a local small business owner is the right thing for you. Because some people, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people just thrive better and do a much better job when they have other people that are motivating them and that are giving them what they need to accomplish for the day to be able to make that paycheck. Your paycheck now is 100% dependent upon you and you motivating yourself. Listen, nothing is more rewarding than being a local small business owner. Having your own business, period, whether it's local or if it's an online business or whatever the case may be, it's a wonderful thing. And I just want you to go into it with your eyes wide open. I want you knowing the good, the bad, and the ugly of everything that you need to understand before you make that leap. And hopefully you've seen some of the things today. Some of the stuff should not be new to you. Some of it might've given you an aha moment for you to be able to think about. Uh, but the important thing is, is that you make that leap with your eyes wide open. Make sure that you have the money set aside to be able to make that leap. Uh, you know, the closer you get the boat to the dock, the easier that leap's going to be. So if you can do part-time until you can get to full 
full time, that's wonderful. Uh, if you're going to just dive in head first, then you definitely need to make sure those eyes are doubly opened uh, because you need to be able to be careful with that. So with that, hopefully you've gotten some ideas of what it's going to take to be able to get your business open. And I wish you the best uh, at doing that. And uh, I can't wait to see you make that leap to a full time local small business owner.